you guys have that in the Old Testament, Malachi, the very last book of the Old Testament, the third chapter. And I'm going to start at verse six, and I and I didn't get all of this in in. The, I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation, but in my notes I only I, and you know I preach out of the New King James versions. In my notes I have the New Living, but I only have verses eight through twelve. So I'm going to read six and seven out of the New King James Version, and then I'm going to jump over to the New Living Translation. So we, we, we should all be good, but okay, is that fair? So, so, so here we go. Malachi 3, starting at verse 6. It starts by saying, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Now, how many people are glad about that? Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. He said, the only reason I have not destroyed you utterly is because of a promise I made to your fathers. Yes. I do not change. He said, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. So God says, return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, in what way shall we return? Should people cheat God? Yet, you have cheated me. But you now ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat God of anything? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings that are due me. So you are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse and so there will be enough food in my temple. And if you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. And I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room to take it in. God says, try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven. Then all nations will call you blessed. For your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven. Amen? Amen. So this morning I want to talk about what God has asked us to do. And that is put God to the test. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed and holy is your name. Yes. We thank you for an opportunity that we have to come and gather around the Word of God. Even as we feel the warmth and comfort of the heat and the hope that it provides. And at the same time, we are challenged to obey and live for God at a higher standard. God, we thank you for all the word of God that tells us of the abundance that belongs to the children of God. Amen. And that out of this abundance, we are not to sit back and enjoy and enlarge ourselves. But we ought to give, press down, shaken together, so that the plan and purpose of God would come forth in the earth, yes. even as it is in heaven. So, Father, be with us as we study your word. Open our heart, our mind, our ears, that we might be cheerful givers, even as you have commanded us. Amen. This we ask in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated all over the church. Thank God all those who have come in in the vestibule. Thank, thank God for our ushers and our greeters today. Thank you for your, for your help and your service. 
Verse 6, he changes not. Verse 7, he says, return to me and I will return to you. When we fail in the area of tithe, in the area of giving, specifically our tithes, we separate ourselves from God. It is through the tithes, and we're going to walk it down here in a minute. It is through our tithing, through our giving, that God brings us or draws us closer to himself. And so that's why the prophet says, speaking for God, return to me. They said, how did we leave? When did we leave? We're still coming to the festivals. We still come up for the annual feast. When did we leave? And he says, it is in your giving. So ver verse 8, it says, should people cheat God? And yet you have cheated me. You ask how? How can anyone cheat God? The prophet used an illustration of Israel's spiritual defection that is very visible and undeniable. One thing you will all you gotta always remember this: the money trail never lies. It never lies. You can lie about praying. No one's at home with you. If you say you pray, all we can do is take your word at you. You can say you're being faithful. We can say you're fasting. We don't know. The fact that you have crumbs on your mouth does not mean you're not fasting. You said you're fasting. That's a joke, y'all. All right, good. There you go. You know what? I, I need one of those buttons when you hit it. It, la it inserts laughter for you, but whatever. But, but the reality is the money trail, it doesn't lie. And oftentimes you can find out a man's heart or a woman's heart simply by following the money trail. We spend money on our real God. <clears throat> the Lord pointed out that they had not brought the required tithes and offering. Those used to sustain the Levitical order and the priesthood. Those used for the religious festivals to which the people of Israel gathered. And also it was the tithes that was used to feed the poor, the widow, and the fatherless. And by not paying their tithes, they in fact were robbing God. Not only did they rob God, but they also robbed themselves for God was separated from them and withheld his blessing. Okay? Wasn't mad at them. It was through their disobedience that they had pushed God out. You follow what I'm saying? So, so here, a couple of things. I want to I I make sure we answer it because if anyone has a question, there's probably more who have a question as, as well. So let's turn to Leviticus 27 and 30. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus 27 and 30. Everybody have that? And it says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wants to at all redeem any of his tithe, he shall add one-fifth to it. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock or whatever passes underneath the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it. If he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it shall be holy and it shall be redeemed. So what is a tithe? A tithe represents a tenth, or what you and I would say, 10%. So God, what is the tithe? The tithe is a tenth. Also concerning the tithe, as we read there, the tithe is holy. Amen. Okay? What does it mean to be holy? To be holy means that something is dedicated or, cons or consecrated to God. 
Okay? What is the tithe? It represents tenth. In our reading of Leviticus, it talks about seed and grain because that was their economy. Being shepherds and being farmers, they didn't necessarily deal necessarily in gold and silver. What they raised or what they used to sustain themselves was livestock, sheep, goats. Uh, 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 they had farmland. They would raise their own food. And so whatever their increase came in for a season, they would give a tenth or 10% 10 of that and they would bring it to God and God says that the tithe is holy. Okay. And this is where we get into, uh, you say, well, how, how, how could God be separated from them uh, if they don't bring the tithe? Because the tithe is holy, meaning it is dedicated to God, meaning it belongs to God. Right. Amen. 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 It belongs to God. So there, we, we, we create a trespass when we don't bring it to God. Okay. Now, whose watch is it? It's my watch. But whose hands is it in? Right? It's in his hand, but it's what? My watch. Does he have a right to wear it? Does he have a right to does he have a right to give it to someone else? It's in his hand, right? It's in his possession, but what? It does not belong to him. It still belongs to who? To me. And at the proper time, he's obligated to what? To return it back to its rightful owner. Are you with me on that? That, that, that that's, that's the tithe. God has increased us in whatever portion, but God says, out of all that I have increased you, 10% of it, a tithe, belongs to me. Right. Amen. Amen. And if you do anything other than return it to me when required, the prophet says you have robbed God. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I want, I want you, we, we can get this. If no one takes this out and sells it or give it to someone or whatever, he's robbing me. It's not Norm's watch. Right. It's mine, right? right? Tell your neighbor, say, the tithe belongs to God. The tithe belongs to God. Well, how do we know that? Because it is holy. Here you go. Let's go to Deuteronomy 12, 17. I'm just going to add this too. A lot of people miss, miss this too regarding the, the tithe. 12, Deuteronomy 12, 17 and 18. You, got, you guys have that? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy 12, 17. Now I want you to I want you to listen to this because this is interesting. It says you may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain or your new wine or your oil, or of the firstborn of your herd or flock, or any of your offerings which you vow, or of your free will offering, or of the heave offering which is of your hand. But you must eat them before the Lord your God in the place which the Lord your God chooses. You, your son, daughter, male servant, female servant, the Levite within your gates. You shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all to which you put your hands. A tithe is holy. A tithe is a tenth. A tithe is holy. And a tithe must be brought to the Lord's house. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. He just said the tithe, you can't eat that at home. That's not, that's not for you to consume. It's holy. It needs to be set apart for God. And when you come to the tabernacle, bring the tithe with you. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? The tithes must be brought to the Lord's house. That's what he means when he says where his name is. Okay? That's where the name, where, that's where God has chosen to place his name. Not only must you bring the tithe to God's house, you, not only must you come, your whole family's got to come. Amen. Important concept important concept because when once you begin to operate under the tithe you'll see here in a minute the tithe blesses not only you but your whole house Amen. do you follow what I'm saying and they need to be bought why because they're not only under the covering of the tithe but also you want to 
teach them the tithe. You want this thing that God is about to start in your life to go beyond your life into the life of your children and your grandchildren. Look what, the, look what he said. He said, bring your son, your daughter, your son, anybody who works for you, bring all, everybody who's under this house, because when you bring this tithe, now you're entering into covenant with God over your whole house. Amen. Raise your hand if you want your whole house blessed. Amen. This is how you do it. So it's got to be brought to the Lord's house. And when you come, you got to bring your family. And it must be given cheerfully. Did you read at the end? He said, when you come, come rejoicing. Yes. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Come rejoicing. Come rejoicing over the fact that I am now doing business with God himself. Amen. Come, come rejoicing because now my whole house is covered by the protection and promises of God. Yes. We spend more time investing in our alarm system, in our security to protect our homes, protect our goods. And reality is that we need to come into a contract with God so that God now becomes our provider, our protection. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? And God said, I'll do it if you just bring the text. It's a simple exchange. He said, if you do it, I'll bless you. Now, here's the important thing. It's the tithe is tenth. It's holy. Uh, uh, you must bring it to God's house. Why must we bring it to God's house? Because God wants to be in relationship with you. God says, I'm going to increase you so that your house can be blessed. But he says, I want you to bring the tithe back to me so that my house can be blessed. And not only can my house be blessed, but it is there you and I can have fellowship. Amen. When, we, when we get into the New Testament, one of the names for God is Emmanuel, yes. meaning God with us. From the creation of the world that we know, God has always wanted to be in relationship with mankind. Yes. Yes. That was the whole reason he made Adam. Amen. He didn't make Adam and Eve because he just didn't have nothing else to do. Out of all that he created, he said, I need something, I need somebody that I can come into relationship with in the earth. Yeah. And he created Adam and Eve. And if you read the Genesis account, we know from that reading that what? He often came, that Adam and Eve didn't go up. God came down and fellowship with them where? In the garden. That's what he made it for. The garden of Eden was nothing more than a designated place in the earth where God could hang out with Adam and Eve. That's all. He made the whole world, but out of everything he made, he had a special place. Yes. If you're with me, if you're in the spirit, you find this is what the tithe does. He had a special, and look, even in the garden, he had the principle of the tithe working. He said, in the garden, you can eat everything in the garden. But there's one tree that is set aside or withheld from you. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the tithe. Amen. It's the principle of the tithe. He said you can have everything. Eat what you want. Do what you want. But of this tree, yeah. Yeah. you shall not eat or touch. Why? Because it's holy. Amen. It represents the tithe unto God. Amen. And all the tithe does for you and I, it does what God wants us to do for him. The tithe is nothing more than a test. That's all it is. Watch it. How many people, raise your hand if you love God. Prove it. Prove it. And when you just raise your hand, you say, now prove it. Right? In order to prove or, or to determine that you love somebody or something, so, something's got to take place in order to prove it. If not, it's nothing more than empty words. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? But if you love me, there should be some demonstration or action to what? Prove your love to me. Do you follow what I'm saying? And what God gives to the believer, he gives the test of the tithe. That's how you prove your love to God. 
You follow what I'm saying? And he said, you got, I want you to be careful because th th this is not a trick. It's a test. But remember, the tithe is holy. Amen. It belongs to me. Amen. So you can't give your tithe to something or somebody else. Amen. We learn here, it says the tithe, when they brought it into the storehouse, it was used to maintain the Levites and the priesthood. It was used for the religious festivals, but it was also used for the poor, the widows, and the fatherless. Amen. That does not give us an option to say, okay, since that's what the tithe is going to be used for, my cousin is poor, I'm just going to give him the tithe. Uh -huh. Right? I'm bringing that up because people have asked me this. Yeah. Since that's what it's going to be used for, let me just use it for someone I know who falls in those categories. We want to bring the tithe into God's house so God can determine how it is to be used. Right. Do you follow what I'm saying? Right. So good. So now, so, so now we have that. Verse 9. He says, you are under a curse. Your whole nation has been cheating me. The only thing I want you to get out of this is understand something. What did he say back in verse 6? He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Amen. He created Adam and Eve. Of his own free will, he called out Israel. Right. You follow what I'm saying? So it, it, I'm just going to take the logical next step. It is not God's plan or desire to destroy us. Right, right. Why? He created us. He called us out into a special relationship with himself. So it's not God's will for you to be destroyed, for you to live under him. That's not God's, that's not God's will. Amen. But if in fact you are cursed or find yourself fighting uphill in this life, when God says we are to have the abundant life, God, why is not my life abundant? Why does it feel like I'm fighting, like I'm going uphill or I'm fighting against waves? God says you are cursed with a curse. Right. And God is saying, I didn't do it though. Right. Don't blame God. Right. Right. The tithe is only a test. Since God has not cursed us, our own disobedience has. So, here, so this, this is what I want to give you now. So that's the preamble. Now we enter it. Verse 10. Here are the miracles of the tithes. Verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. So, so here, bring all the tithes. One of the penalties against Israel, they were bringing whatever they wanted and was calling it a tithe. If it's not 10%, is not a tithe. Amen. Okay? So just because you put it on the line that says tithe, if it's not 10%, it's not a tithe. Anything less is not a tithe. Every time you're increased, every time there's a harvest in your life, you are to bring what is owed or due God to the storehouse. We got to bring it to the church where his name is. The first miracle is this, is that... Um, when there is enough in God's, the first miracle is that there should be enough in God's house on the earth to do God's will in the earth. Amen. Amen. Do you follow me on that? Yeah. God has set up this system. So that God's work can be uh, uh, furnished or provided for in the earth. Right, right, right? right? Because God doesn't need our currency in heaven. Right. Do you follow what I'm saying? Right. That operates in God's currency. But in the earth, God has set up this system whereby we can enter into relationship with him. So when we bring our tithe to the house... Our ties collectively begin to build the foundation that God uses to supply the house. Amen. Whatever is needed, God says, I will supply it simply by the tithe. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? So here's the reality of this. If if, if we come collectively and all of us bring the tithe, no matter what it is God asks us to do, the tithe will pay for it. Amen. Right. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. This is a big concept. Oftentimes we shortcut the tithe and then we got to come up with all these other ways. Right. 
to try to make up the difference to fund God's agenda. And all we really should do is just do it the way God has outlined it. He said, if you just bring the tithe, everything that I want to do, I'll be able to do it from what's in the storehouse of God. Do you follow what I'm saying? Re re oh, this is, watch this. Exodus 36 and 2. I'm always blown away when I read this. Exodus, the 32nd chapter. Thirty-six. I said thirty-two. Thirty-six. Thank you, Norm. I'm looking in my notes and I can't even read it right. You got that? Exodus thirty-six and two. They're building the temple, the tabernacle. Moses has given them the blueprint. Moses has hired the people to do it, to do the work, the skilled craftsmen, the artisans. And now the artisans have come back to Moses. They say, Lord, if this is what you want us to do, this is what we need. Right? And every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and do the work. So verse 3, and they received from Moses all of the offering with the children of Israel brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. God said, build me a sanctuary. Amen. Gave Moses the blueprint. Moses said, where am I going to get the money to build this? He said, ask the people for it. Right. So he asked the people for it, and they started bringing it. All right? And, 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 and so, so they continued bringing him free will offering every morning. Wow. Not every week, every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing, and they spoke to Moses. Sound like they got a grievance. Look at what the grievance is. They said, look, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses had to give a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the entire camp, said, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary, and the people were restrained from bringing. Any material that was used that they had was already sufficient for all the work to be done. Look at the end of verse. It said, indeed, it was too much. This is the word of God. God's sanctuary. Gave it to Moses. He gave the blueprint. Now go get the people. Moses said, I got the people to build it. To build it, they need the resources. You want, you want, you want, you want blue and you want scarlet and you want wood. You want gold. How, how are we going to do it? He said, ask the people for it. The Bible, here's the story. They gave, they didn't give enough. They literally gave too much. You follow what I'm saying? This is the word of God. This is what can happen when the people of God honor the tithe. There can literally be an abundance in the house of the Lord. Now look, if it's an abundance in God's house, what does that mean about your house? In order for there to be a lot in God's house, there has to first be a lot what? In your house. That means God blesses you for the furnishing, not only of your house, but for the upkeep of his own house. You follow what I'm saying? So we don't lose in this transaction. It's not like we're giving God the 90% and we're only left with the 10. God said, you keep the majority. Give what little you give. He said, I'm not even into the amount. I'm just in the testing your faith. This sanctuary I am building so that I will have a place among all 12 tribes where I can dwell among you. I'm literally going to be in the center of the camp. And whatever you need, you can always come to the tabernacle of God. But to have that dwelling place, I need you to build it. I need you to have some skin in the game. And I need to prove your love. And so they said they brought and they brought and they brought. And Moses literally had to tell them, stop, you're bringing too much. Then it says this. He said, I will open the windows of heaven for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to receive it. 
He says, try it. Put me through the test. Here's the second miracle. He says, I will open the windows of heaven. And that simply means there will be nothing blocking or hindering God's blessing from reaching you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yes. Here's your homework assignment. If you're interested, you Google it. Research. You got you got your Bible on your phone. I want you to research this phrase in the Bible: "Open heavens." Okay. That's your homework, and just read it and see what it does for you. Amen. Open. Look what happens in the Bible when the heavens are open. Amen. This is, I'm, not, I'm not even going forward. That's your homework assignment. But God said, if you bring the tithe, the, one of the other miracles I'm going to do over your house, over your household, your land, your cattle, your children, your in-law, everybody, I am going to open the windows of heaven. Yeah. All of us want to live under open heavens. Yeah. And when you do your homework, you, you'll see I'm telling the truth. The third miracle, he said, not only will I open the windows of heaven, he said, I will pour out a blessing. The word pour means to flow rapidly in a steady stream. Amen. God said, now that the windows are open, now I'm going to pour out rapidly into your life in a steady Steady stream. Yes, yes. And what God is going to pour out, the, 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 uh, the prophet tells us he's going to pour out many, many blessings in your life. Right, right. Wrong, y'all not to put that ain't what he said. I, I went left and y'all went right. The church says I will pour out a blessing. Right? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Whoever is next to you, nudge him and just tell him it only takes one. It only takes one. All it takes is one. You, you don't need a whole lot of blessings. It, it, if God just blessed you one time, because God is eternal, his blessings are what? Eternal. One idea, one invention. What one move you made at the right time, that thing can perpetuate throughout your lifetime and the lifetime of the rest of your family. Because with God, all it takes is one. Right? Through one man, we receive salvation. Not through many men. One man died. And it was through his death that we what? Now have redemption. God says, I'm going to open the windows and I'm going to pour out a single, I'm going to do one thing in your life and it's going to change your life forever. Amen. Amen. It's the power of the time. Amen. This is, that's the third miracle. Pour out a blessing. And then this is what I love and this is, our, this is, this, this is where you see I got this subject. He says, try me, put me to the test. God wants you to test, try, or prove him because God wants to bless you. Yes. Tell your neighbor God wants to bless you. It's his will, it's his desire to bless you. He's got blessings up in heaven and he's trying to get them to us. But sometimes when we break the law of the tithe and the heavens shut up over us, it's not that God no longer wants to bless us, but now we're living under closed heavens. Now there's a drought in the land. Now there's famine, nothing going, no rain coming down, no seed time in harvest. All of a sudden, my cycle is dried up. I used to always be flowing in the things of God. I used to always be, hey, let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. Most people don't believe me when I'm telling them this. It's harder to tithe when you have more. People always believe, oh, pastor, I can't give it. It's all I have. It's harder to give to God when you've got more. When I didn't have much, the tithe was only $7.50. But as God begins to increase you, that $7.50 goes to now it's $75. Now God continues to increase. Now your 10% is $750. You write that check and like, whoa. <laughs> That's a car payment. That's rent. 
You mean, but but look, but you gotta understand. Now, now, and now all of a sudden we got second thoughts. When it was 750, we didn't care. Because you can't do nothing with 750 anyway. But now that God has blessed you, that's why, now, watch how God works. That's why he says when you bring the tithe to the house, bring your kids. Teach them the principle while they're young. You follow what I'm saying? You, it, it's hard to teach someone to tithe and they way up in age. Because they got all this other stuff on them now. But when you're young, you can get this ingrained in your system. That through the tithe, God tests or proves my love to him. And if I pass the test, God will prove his love to me. Do you follow what I'm saying? So we got to get the tithe. So that's the second and third principle. Let me give you number four and five. He says your crops will be abundant. And he said they're going to be that way because I'm going to protect them from insects and disease. He said also your grapes, your harvest, your fruit, your vegetables, it will not fall from the vine before they are ripe. The fourth miracle is this, divine protection. He said I will guard them from insects and disease. Touch your neighbor and say let God do it. When you bring the tithe, God says, I'm working for you now. God says, I'm now protecting your stuff. I'm now over your business. I'm now over your house. I'm now over your family. Now, 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 now you're under divine protection. That's miracle number four. Miracle number five is this. He says, your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe. Yes. On the one hand, you get divine protection. On the other, you get divine timing. Amen. Yes. I didn't get enough amens on that. You get divine timing. How many people realize that timing... Y'all should have said amen then. Why I got to come down here and scare you? Timing is everything. You can have the right thing. You can be in the right place. Everything could be lined up perfect. And if you hit it at the wrong time, you miss everything. But every now and then, God will tap you on the shoulder and have you turn around at just the right time. Just the right time to meet someone coming by. Just the right time for someone to see what your hands has produced. Just the right time someone to see your gift, your skill, what you're able to do. You had it all your life, but it wasn't until the right time in God's plan. That's what the tithe does. The tithe gets the blessing of God flowing at the right time in your life. Do you follow what I'm saying? How many want divine timing? God, you show me the right time. When is the right time to put my business plan out there? When is the right time to let someone know what I've been working on? When is the right time to go to a networking meeting and start meeting people? When is the right time for me to start dating again? When is the right time for me to start coming into relationship again? A lot of the problems we face is because our timing has been off. We're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Then we fall among the wrong people and we wonder why God God has cursed. God hasn't cursed you. You're out from under the tithe. The blessing of the tithe, he'll not only give you protection, he'll give you divine timing. Verse 12 says, then all the nations will call you blessed for your land will be such a, a, such a delight, says the Lord of the armies, the armies of heaven. Here's the sixth miracle. Your land will be delightful and plentiful. God said, when, once you get me operating in your life, God said, I'm going to bless you so good. And the thing I want you to understand about this, I want you to look beyond material blessing. God said, I'm going to bless your land. That means I'm going to bless what you own. What you have. And I'm going to bless it in such a way that people are going to come and notice what I have done in your life. I'm going to make you a delightful land. And when people 
walk by, they're going to know that the Lord has blessed you. They're going to know. They're going, they're, they're, they're going to know. We're going to work this thing out this afternoon between Elijah and Elisha after he passes his mantle. And when Elisha came back over the Jordan the second time, the school of the prophets, they all knew. They looked at him. They said, the spirit of Elijah is on him now. We, we don't have to take a vote. It doesn't matter whether we like him or don't like him. It doesn't matter whether he lives in our community or in it. It is no question that the hand of the Lord is on him. God said, I'm going to bless you until everyone knows it. And God wants to put you on display. And let me tell you why. He wants to put you on display because he can now trust you. That's what the tithe does. God said, if you can honor me in the tithe, God said, I'll put your life on display. Because when the people come up to admire you, he said, at this point, I know I can trust you. And that you won't get foolish and begin to say, oh, I'm blessed because of what? I have done. Oh, oh, I got this house because of some of the moves I made. But once God proves the tie in your life, that's when God knows, yeah, now I can trust him. Now I can bring him into a large place. And when the people come, when the nations come, they won't accept the praise for their self. But they'll say it like this, if it had not been for the Lord, that's how I got here. That's how I keep my family together. That's how I raise my kids as a single parent. Not because I wrote the great parenting book, but the Lord. My children are under divine protection. My business is under divine timing. No, I didn't go to school. No, I don't have the education. I didn't even write a business plan. But the Lord. So every Sunday, Lord, I'll bring the tithe. Every Sunday, I'll prove to God that he can trust me. When it's small or whether it's a lot, I'm going to bring it to the storehouse. I'm going to bring it because one day the pastor told me it's holy. It's not mine anyway. And when I bring it, I'm going to come rejoicing. When I bring it, I'm going to bring my sons with me. I'm going to bring my girls with me. And say, we're going to the house. of a, Jacob wakes up every day. It's today a church day. Yes, today's a church day. Let's go to the house of the Lord. What are we going to the house? We see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we're going because we got it. we're entering into a relationship with God. We're going to go to God's house so that God can visit us in our house. And so that whatever we do in Jesus' name, because of our relationship with God through the tithe. Today my house is blessed. My children blessed. Business blessed. Whatever it is that God has purposed in your heart, in your life, God says, put me to the test. Prove me. See if I will not do what I said I would do. That's why I started. You look at my notes. I, I, I picked up at verse 8, but I kept looking this morning. I said, I got to go back and get verse 6. Because in verse 6, he started out by saying what? I change not. Yeah. I change not. Yeah. You, you may have changed, but I haven't. Right. Just like I wanted to bless you back then, I still want to bless you now. Right. All we got to do is get our relationship back in order. Yeah. All you got to do is prove your love to me yes. through the tithe. You don't have to dance. You don't have to spin around. You don't have to shout. You don't have to fall out. Get seven people to pick you up. That does not mean you love the Lord. That means you lost your balance. 
let the church say. <laughs> but when you bring the tithe, you don't even make a big deal about it. You just bring it and put it. And you leave, go back expecting God to start working in your life. God, I've been faithful over a few things. It wasn't much, but I was faithful. I understood your word. I understood what you wanted to do in my life. Then I began to understand where people always have. I don't even know where I'm getting all these dreams from. I'm getting all these visions. And I try to tell them, that's God trying to speak in your life. That's God trying to let you know he's got a purpose for you in this life. Something for you to do. Somewhere for you to go. Something to build. Something to create. Something to do that would bring God the glory. But the question remains, can God trust you? Can he trust me to be consistent in all that God has given me? So I hope that this has been helpful, not only to Sister Sharon, but to the broader, the broader population of the church. God commands us to be cheerful givers. Why does God want us to give? So in some small way, we can know what it's like to be God. Because what do we know of our God? John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world. How do we know he loved the world? Because he gave. How will God know we love him? When we give. So that's our challenge today. Put God to the test. So in all that you're doing for God, be sure to bring the tithe. Prove your love. Prove your faithfulness to him. And I always teach this when I teach on tithing. Once you really understand the power of the tithe, the question becomes, why in the world would you not tithe? Why? 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 I mean, you don't, even, you don't have to be Einstein to figure that out. That I can have all of this. These miracles operating in my life day after day, week after week. And all I have to do is honor God Amen. in the time. Shall we all stand? Amen. 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 Amen.